Hello world, oh, this is Wolfstar Games, it's Anton, and welcome back to more Robotics Notes Elite. Last time, a couple of big things happened. Uh, one being uh, Kaito's Nightmares, it, it, and that really shows me how much uh, Mizuka's death has affected him, and it... I mean, it's really... I want to say that it really uh, shows me what his mental state is, uh, at least subconsciously, since he was dreaming about her. And the other thing that happened was Kaito went to the hospital to... I guess check on and to see how uh, ID, the real ID, is doing. Which I'm really glad he did. I mean, I had been w wondering about her myself. Just, uh, just for like a peace of mind, I'm glad that he did that. Not just for himself, but also for me as well. <laughs> I mean, it's like I, I adore ID. She's such a sweetheart. Since. ID in IRUO was her memories, you know, we've gotten to know her a fair deal, so I, I feel that with Kaito going to see ID in the hospital, that I'd, I'd say that, like, over time, once they get to know each other a little more, uh, spe specifically ID knowing Kaito more, since the real her doesn't actually know him. I, I feel like the two of them would come to a fairly quick uh, friendship, seeing uh, seeing that uh, Kaito did make friends with her as an AI. So I can only hope from here going forward that eventually ID, the, the real ID, will become you know part of the group. I mean... We know from the beginning of the game that she's uh, there with everyone else, and I, I thought that would be like the the AI version of her. But now that the AI of her is gone, the ID from the very beginning of the game that we saw has to be the real ID. So. That just tells me that she will become part of the group. So, uh, enough uh, of my spiel here. We'll finally get back into the game here. And we, right where we left off, was at the very beginning of the expo. So, let's get going on that, shall we? Hi! And there's a lot to see here. Rob a robo toy. <laughs> what? Sh showcasing uh, that one's strength. A Achilles. アキリスイモ。今日ここで何が行われるのかと言いますと。そう、いよいよあの東京万博2020夢創造博が始まるんです。昨年11月太陽嵐災害が関東地方を襲い大きな被害を受けました。万博も開催中止寸前まで行ったということなんですがその困難を乗り越え、こうして無事開幕を迎えたんです。万博は品川会場、豊洲会場、お台場会場と都内の計3カ所で行われるわけですが、中でも一番の注目がここお台場会場なんですよ
アクアライナーも開業しすでに始発から超満員ですさあその万博お台場会場の見どころなんですけれども。If you really want me to ask, well, what is the highlight then? Zubari, Okina Roboto des. Of course. Honkai no Tokyo Bampakwa, Betsme, Roboto Bampak to Moyobarate Hoto deste. Ima, Sekai Ju de Chisote Kai Hatsarate, Kyodai Nisoko Hoko Roboto Tachika, Kono Kai Joni Sezoro is there in this ne. Masa ni Yume no Kyoen. The fanfare kind of clashed with the background music a little bit. So, the fanfare kind of clashed with the b a c k g r o u n d Just like on the news, guests begin to flood into the arena. Expo opens with extremely long lines. That's not surprising. Like, at all. I wonder what people are gonna think of ours. I mean, that they have to use their phone droids in order to see g u n v a r e l so I wonder how that's gonna go over with people. Our booth is on the edge of the building, so most of the crowd has yet to get to our end. I see parents and children, couples, and groups of men pass along the aisle in front of me. Everyone is stunned. They're all looking upward at all the robots. <laughs> Other robots have already started their performances. The various exhibits each have pretty a pretty large chunk of space. Each booth is about 30 square meters. Exhibitors are free to perform however they like. That said, dangerous materials and fire are prohibited. From our booth, I can see the other exhibitors' robots walking, moving their limbs, transforming, and dancing. Dancing! <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, like, what kind of dances? They serve to remind me of the gap between us. The stuff the pros paid for and made are on another level. It's like, I I'm just thinking of.、Uh, thinking and imagining. A robot's dancing, and I'm like, and I'm thinking of like the different dance styles. and I, I, I think it would be kind of cool and funny to see like a robot like moonwalk. <laughs> the guests who came to visit are enjoying themselves while watching said performances. But sadly, We don't have a single guest hanging out around our booth. Hmm. Right, real quick here before we、uh, get further into this, I have a couple of Tweepo messages here. Let's see. Uh. I believe this is new. Reporting an update for the spread of the Kimijima reports as of February 20th. 22nd, 2020, 71% has spread worldwide. Total completion 13%. Singapore. Past, past. 90%. Russia, past 10%. India, increased by. Uh, wow. 420% in the past 24 hours confirmed. That is a huge percentage. 420? Hold an all nighter marathon in Gunvaral. A little sleepy, but I got this. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. I wonder if Big Sister is watching. Hopefully, she is. Hopefully, she's here. 
Finally, today is the opening day for Tokyo Expo. Tanagashima Robot Club exhibiting at booth R2-9. Please stop by. <laughs> A handful of people walking by us do, however, stop to remark on our robot. I mean, it, I mean, we need to let people know that in order to really see the full glory of our robot, that they need to look through IRUO, or or maybe that's part of what uh, that sign says on the table. I don't know. What's Industrial use? I mean, just looking at the frame, I can see how someone would think that. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> I can already hear people talking trash. It's like, come on guys, get your robot moving. It's true that our booth, robot included, is pretty simple and janky. It's not elaborately designed like the bigger, more expensive exhibits. Dunverell Creation Journal. We have one long table by the aisle. On top are Gunvarel production journal booklets detailing the club's history. It also contains behind the scenes shots from Gunvarel's creation. Oh, that's cool. It's fairly simple, reflecting that we're rookies. I mean, it, I mean they're really uh, kind of laying it on thick that they're rookies by showing and giving people the this uh, journal. I mean, I don't know if that was the best move or not, but yeah, you know, it is what it is, I guess. We can't use our club's real name, so we entered as the ex we entered the expo as the Tanagashima Robot Club. Yeah, I guess that works. This means we can't even brag about our link to Misane or our wins at Robo One. Our robot is the only thing we can use to compete. Well, that's a little unfortunate. And yet, Model Two remains crouched inside of the booth. <laughs> It did. It's like, what, what's. What exactly is the problem? <laughs> it's like, calm down. Calm down, Sumio. Oh, and uh, Michi actually dressed up. Like he's actually wearing something different than just a tracksuit. For once. Jojan, <laughs> it's A hundred thousand yen. Well, that's very uh, generous. Guests have been flooding into the building, but Model 2 remains offline. At this point, we've come up with multiple reasons as to why that might be the case. One possibility is that the compact laser transmission gun is malfunctioning. It's like, why would it be malfunctioning now? After all, it's something we borrowed. Not even Akiho knows how the gun works. When she tried shooting the laser at Model 2's antenna, she said it felt like the laser output was weaker than before. Really? Huh. I mean, 
the laser powers model two. Is there anything that powers the laser? I don't think so. Akio's been holding the gun at eye level, inspecting it. Sadly, that's not enough to figure out what's wrong. Do we even have time to do that? Hmm. なんで最初からいきなりつまずいちゃうの? Hopefully, uh, they call back soon. So, I think it's better to just wait it out. But what? Akio stares at the crouched Model 2. Then, she has what appears to be an epiphany. What about the parabolic antenna? Oh, was it? Did we... Did we do something to it that made it malfunction? Yesterday, we moved the antenna to its waist so that we could get Model 2 to crouch down from a sleeping position. Hmm... So what, we need to just move the antenna? After putting the robot into standby, it was returned to its original position on its back. Well, that's not good. Akio immediately begins to climb atop the robot. It's like, careful, Akio. Don't you to fall and injure yourself. Are you sure about that? I know the robot is crouching right now, but the antenna is still about three meters up from the ground. She could slip and fall at any moment. It's dangerous and it's making me nervous. I can hear laughter from around me. Ugh. Guests passing through the aisle are looking at Akio clinging to the robot's leg and snickering. You guys hush, we're trying to get things working here. Well, I figured this would happen. Anybody would look at this situation and chuckle. Akio reaches the parabolic antenna and starts checking the wiring. The three of us can only watch from below. Ah! Akio? Nosta! Akio gives us an awkward smile, still clinging to Model 2. It is messed up. Oh no. Well, can we fix it in time? Was she? So, so. Okay. Well, maybe she can 
uh, put it back right. <sighs> it was all just a careless mistake? Good grief. I mean, we are rookies, so... It's like... <laughs> it's like, it, it, it just... Is unfortunate that it's starting out like this. Thirty minutes? Do we have that amount of time to spare? Uh, Candy san's hired hands aren't here anymore. They were only brought in to help assemble the robot. Okay, so it's just the four of us. It's like everyone needs to pull their weight here to get it model two fixed. Which means during the expo, Akio is in charge of all maintenance. In charge of it, sure. But she shouldn't be the only one to try and fix Model 2, so everyone else needs the help. She has nobody she can turn to for help. I'm basically useless. He keeps saying that, but he could at least try to help. Where am I going to find a stepladder? She didn't even prepare one beforehand? Jeez, Akiho. I head over to the expo staff area and ask to borrow a big stepladder. Oh, there we go. As I walk through the arena, stepladder in hand, guests grumble at me. Oh, you guys shush. I apologize and try to hurry back to our booth. But sadly, the venue is already filled with people. The wide aisles are totally packed. This is the first time I've seen so many people concentrated in one place. It's impossible to walk in a straight line while holding this thing. I'm consistently being touched on my shoulders and back by people I don't know. As someone who grew up on a small island, this is a hell of a experience. The only time things ever get even close to this crowded Fantanagashima is during a festival. I hear the morning rush hour in Tokyo is ridiculous, but I've yet to experience that in my time here so far. There were lots of people at Robo 1 last year, but I was an entrant. I didn't have to fight through a crowd. Quite frankly, I just want to scream. Why don't you then? I'm totally overwhelmed by this sea of human flesh. <laughs> Interesting way to put it, and also, to some people, I bet that would be a little bit of a disturbing uh, description. Meanwhile, nobody else seems remotely bothered by any of this. Tokyo's scary as hell! I thought as much last year, and that feeling has gone unchanged. Up until yesterday, it only took three minutes to get from the staff area to our booth. I've been working for ten minutes, and I'm not even halfway there. I can't even go in the direction I want to go. He kind of has to zigzag his way through. The sea of people moves in waves and currents, and there's no pushing back against it. Just... It's like, just go with the flow, Kaijo. <laughs> Plus, I'm carrying this stepladder to boot. I can't navigate through all of this. I just... Be careful making your way through, I guess. Which, of course, leads me being pushed and dragged in the wrong direction. 
Unfortunately, I end up at a booth with a huge crowd in front of it. The Exoskeleton Company exhibit is absolutely packed. <laughs> Everyone's admiring this robot, huh? Even though that it's a prototype, the hug incidents and lawsuits have caused their rep to drop hard, but they still command lots of attention. Not surprising. <laughs> It's not piloted. Okay, so is it? It's not piloted from the inside, right? So it would have to be uh, piloted remotely. Right now, the big spider like hug at the booth called Sumaragi is wiggling its six legs around. It's actually kind of charming. Charming, okay. <laughs> How is it charming? Octopus like, except it doesn't have eight legs, it has six. I, I, I know I may sound like I'm nitpicking, but I call it as I see it. When I first saw it, I thought it'd be more creepy in action, but I was totally wrong. Do they need more than one person to operate it? To, to move all the arms and legs? FOS Finger Operating System Okay And uh, what exactly does that entail of getting it to uh, move? Just move your fingers and it moves? <laughs> <laughs> a companion girl holding a mic is explaining the control system near Sumeragi. Okay, it's it's basically like I was thinking. It's like just using the uh, operator's fingers. So, it's like... It's like a spider, basically. It's like... This is an old joke, but it's like... What is this? A spider doing push-ups on a mirror. Old joke, but I couldn't resist. Nisune is nowhere to be found today. At least not by the exoskeleton display. She may be elsewhere, though. Since coming to Tokyo, Akio and I have tried contacting her every day. But, but she hasn't responded once. I thought she'd at least show up for opening day, but... As I stare vacantly at the spider robot, the people around me begin to get irritated. You're in the way. Crap, they're right. Wait, I gotta hurry back to the booth! Looks like I'm gonna have to force my way through. Carefully, though. I push my way through the crowds of people, apologizing along the way. Nearly 40 minutes have passed since rewiring on the parabolic antenna began. 
It took him 40 minutes to get back. Repairs aren't going well. Akiho is the only person who can fix it. Is she really the only person? And she's not as skilled as Subaru or Doc, who of course aren't here. Well, you could try helping Sumio. Candy-san frowns and sighs. Kojikimona. Thank you, Meichi. <clears throat> the president and Michi literally stand there with their mouths hanging open, watching Akio work from below. Senomiya Imoto! Pants Mieruza! Michi! Keep your voice down. Kulat? Or, or is it Kulare? いいか、妹。こいつは豆知識だから。キュロットスカートはそが広めだろう。だからな、角度によっては隙間から中が見える。<laughs> you tell him, Akio. <laughs> Good grief. If he's just going to bother her, he might as well hand out booklets to people walking around. Yeah, seriously. What am I doing? I'm moving the honorary prez around in an attempt to draw people to our booth. But at the end of the day, it's just a hobby robot. Guests are here to see giant robots. There are less and less people passing by, too. We've literally been the object of ridicule for the entire time. Uh, it's like first day and it is not going well. I feel like an eternity's worth of time has passed. If this is what we got to deal with on the first day, the next half year is going to be a real struggle. Uh, I just want to go home. Or at least play some kill ballad. Oi! Hello? Uh -huh. Literally from out of nowhere. A young guy I've never seen before runs up and kicks the honorary prez like a soccer ball. Hey! Not cool! <laughs> but before I can finish complaining, the guy has moved on to his next course of action. He holds up a plastic bottle of mineral water and flings it at Model 2. The robot is over 5 meters away from me and the guest. The plastic bottle flies in a wide arc toward Akiho working on top of the stepladder. <laughs> the plastic bottle hits Akiho, causing her to lose balance on the stepladder. Uh oh. She swings her hands around, trying to grab at the air, but ultimately ends up falling. Uh, are you okay, Akiho? I rush over in a panic. It's like, what, what is that guy's deal? Jeez. That kicks the tiny Gashi machine and then throws a bottle at Akio? It's like, very, very rude and inconsiderate. It's like, who was that? Good. That's good. <coughs> Michi? Upon closer inspection, Michi is pinned beneath Akiho. 
Oh, did he go and try and catch her? I guess he tried to catch her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Michi, for trying to catch her. Nice, Michi! Kyoshi no Kagami! Like, at, at the cost of uh, him being pinned underneath Akiho? Yeah. <laughs> she can't be that too terribly heavy. <laughs> Akio hurriedly stands up. She doesn't seem to have any major injuries. That's good. Yeah, you did good, Michi. That's not a pro tip, that's a fact. That's not really a pro tip. Uh, yes. <laughs> Some jerk. Candy san's angry voice echoes through the area. Culprit flinches a little before angrily shouting back. Oh, he's still here. That is that why? Is that why he threw the bottle and kicked the Tanigashi machine? The culprit says his piece, then rushes off. It's impossible to chase after... He... It's impossible to chase af... Wait. It's impossible to chase him after he slips into the crowd. Ugh. It, I don't know why, but I wanted to say it as it's impossible to chase after him. But I, I kept getting the words mixed around. Have people changed their mind about Gunvarel so so drastically? I mean, I, I feel like I, I feel like it's a drastic change in how a person would react to Gunvarel, seeing that how popular Gunvarel was before. It was only half a year ago that it was hailed as a masterpiece. She's blaming herself. あと少しで繋ぎ終わるから。すぐ済ませちゃうね。本当に大丈夫。平気だって。ミッチーのおかげでね。いいしゅうで。だから早くこの子を動かしてあげよう。いや。どれだけ嫌われたって、うちらが
I don't really get what she's trying to say. Just go with it, Aki. Uh, Akio? No. Just go with it, Kaido. <laughs> Akio energetically climbs back up the ladder, breathing through her nose. Crap, that's right. The poor honorary Prez rolled to the edge of the booth after getting kicked. He isn't damaged, is he? One of his arms came off, too. God dang it! Ugh. It's like that guy is on my shit list now. Jeez, what a crappy thing to do. Seriously! It's like, it's one thing to get mad at Gunvaral, but he he kicked a robot that wasn't even Gunvaral. So it's like, what the hell? I'll have Akio fix it later. I'll pick up the honorary Prez and neatly put him away in his special case. And just as I finish, Agio waves at me from the stepladder. Hi! <laughs> Everything good? Oh, good! She's totally defenseless and barely balanced. Uh, careful, Akio! Or M Michi will come and catch you again and get pinned underneath you again. <laughs> Don't blame me if you get another bottle thrown at you. Jeez. Akio climbs down and shoots me a small nod. Alright. I nod in response and open up the Kill Ballad system app. I have control. Akio shoves the compact transmission gun into Michi's hands and goes to start the power generator. Yeah, let's let's kick some butt. <laughs> Show everybody here's some impact. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, get it right, Subio. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
じゃあそれはなしとしてとにかく今すぐ立たせよそれについては了解じゃあみんな離れて We distance ourselves from Model 2 and scatter to the edges of the booth After putting some distance between me and the robot, I input the crouch command. If it's standing, this command gets it to crouch. If it's already crouching, it stands up. Alright, do as you're told, buddy. Without any problems, Model 2 keeps its balance, extends its knees, and slowly stands upright. The view on my phone droid expands. The arena is totally packed with people. I can also clearly see over 10 other robots mid performance. Oh, nice impact! Well, we didn't get to see it stand back up. Kaito kun! Motto mune o! Mune o kyoto sa se te kuri! Mune chiyo de! Wagasa no logo o na! I, can we even do that? Emphasizing the chest. Sonna motion wa nai desu. I didn't think so. I wish he wouldn't ask the impossible of me. <laughs> yeah, really. Michi, denken kyokyo s h i t s u k e t e ne. Akio then picks up a mic, jumps. Up onto the platform and starts talking to the guests walking by in the aisle. Here we go. Now Akio is getting more fired up here. Hopefully, people will stop and look. Akio then clears her throat and pauses for a moment. アキちゃんその話長くなる she, she wants to explain everything. <laughs> Two guests had stopped to watch Akio when she got up on the platform, but they quickly left after getting bored. とっとと動かしようよ。えぇ、ー、でもやっぱうちらの愛と勇気と栄光の奇跡を語った方がインパクト出るって。出ないよ、まったくねうんまったくインパクトになっとらんぞアキホちゃん If Sumio isn't feeling any impact all, then、uh, I guess、uh, no one else will, right? Especially given that、uh, two people already left. And what does she even mean by the tale of love and courage and glory? That sounds so corny. What's wrong with Cordy? 
After looking dejected for a moment, Akio quickly regains her composure. First, I'll show you the performance. Then, I'll show you the performance. <clears throat> Alright, moment of truth. Akio holds up the mic again. She poses exaggeratedly like Mr. Pleiades would, <laughs> then shouts orders at Model 2. So that's how we're doing this? Got it. After receiving Akio's instructions, I quickly input the advance command. Model 2 walks forward. To the guest, it should look like the robot followed Akio's orders. Well, if there was an audience, that is. Despite taking it apart and reassembling it, Gunbuilt 2 moves smoothly just like it did when we tested it on the island. The electric motor gears are loud, making it significantly noisier than the hydraulic motors in the other robots. I am really liking this track. I, I think it's one of the best tracks in the game, if, if you ask me. <laughs> but that actually has the effect of making our robot sound more powerful. And indoors, the effect is markedly increased. People slowly begin to gather in front of our booth, perhaps drown, drawn, not drown, by the loud noises. I figured people would stop to look once our robot got moving. Papa, look through your phone drawing. So Hey, come on now. Talk about straight to the point. Akio starts talking directly to the little kid. Uh, should she really be doing that? Maybe I should stop her. I look to Michi for help, but our delinquent teacher has his hands full of just holding the transmission gun. Uh, let's not uh, lose. Let, uh, let's not have Michi lose his focus. Uh, just give it a try, come on! <laughs> the father refuses to do his toll, but the little boy pulls out his phone droid, takes a look, and starts cheering. Oi, Takashi! This is the first positive reaction we've gotten from the audience all day. That's good! That's good! If we get one positive reaction, we could get more! Which we need! According to Akio, these are Model 2's ults. Special motions programmed into the robot. She wants me to link them into a super combo? I guess she's not holding any cards back. Akio's totally on Cloud 9. Of course. <laughs> like, go with it! The only person in the crowd enjoying himself is a little boy. But regardless, he's our first real guest we've gotten on our half-year journey. So while he may only be one person, I want to make sure he goes home satisfied. Yeah. The special motions require more inputs than the basic ones, so the timing is a lot harsher. Up until the very end, Juno was never able to do it. But she's an amateur. 
Where there, uh, uh, whereas Kaito is a pro, I guess. <laughs> I'm the man ranked second place in the world at Kill Ballad. Uh, okay, that, now he's just kind of gloating. To himself, anyway. I could do command inputs like this with my eyes closed. No biggie. I tap the buttons at high speed. After receiving the command, Model 2 begins to move. It's not just walking. Geki, Geki Sai Daiichi is a karate kata, kata that Jun has been performing since she was a child. All we cut from the kata were the kicks. Right, because if we did kicks, the the robot would fall over, right? Model 2 turns to the left defensively, then transitions into a front punch. It then turns to the right and repeats the motion. After omitting the kick, it performs an elbow strike, sweep, and another front punch. It follows these those motions up with two left and right punches. This entire sequence of movements is registered to a single command. Even the Zen Zenshin stance, while slightly awkward, is reproduced faithfully. It's apparently a fairly basic kata, but it's super impactful. Impactful <laughs> when a giant robot performs it. The punches in particular have a lot of force behind them, leading the boy and the audience to cheer in excitement. Well, I'm glad someone is enjoying themselves. Once I've input a command, I can relax until it's time for the next one, so I take a moment. I look over at the father and son. I was kind of hoping for some animation, but I I, I guess a CG of showing Gunvarel doing his uh, thing <laughs> works as well. The father who'd have who who'd have been so negative about Gunvarel is now looking at Model Two with his son, eyes glimmering. <laughs> Changed his mind now, has he? He kind of reminds me of Akio's old man. Hmm. The same guy who had his two daughters inherit his love for robots and robot anime. In a way, he's the reason that Model 2 exists at all. Some adults never stop loving robot anime, no matter how old they get. That's the same for anything that anyone has ever grown up with. Seeing this father and son follow the robot's movements together is heartwarming. I can't help but smile. <laughs> it's funny, I was so annoyed at how that dude threw the bottle earlier and made fun of our work. I wonder how he would feel if he actually saw the robot moving now. But now? Well, right now, I genuinely want these two to enjoy themselves. Geki Sai Dai Ichi is almost over, so I input the Blast of Spirit command after watching my timing. This is Model 2's most showy move. In the anime, Gunvarel sorties, sorties, and then does its signature pose in front of the enemy. This motion basically represents Gunvarel itself. Akio pushed hard to get this programmed into Model 2, saying that anyone would get hyped up after seeing it. Akio shouts into the mic as Model 2 moves along. She even copies its poses. <laughs> Akio's movements are totally synchronized with Model 2. Gunbarrel! 
But she's not the only one. <laughs> the little boy's doing the same. Both the father and son, oh, and the father, are posing as well. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Model 2's special motion comes to an end, accompanied by Akio's cry. Our first real guests take a commemorative photo afterwards. Nice. They grab a copy of the production journal and leave with smiles as we wave and see them off. <laughs> We did. Akio comes running over to me with a big smile and goes for the high five. Yeah! <laughs> I grin and respond in kind. We're still not getting many visitors. We're on the edge of the venue, so most guests end up going to the major centerpiece exhibits. Can we get our exhibit moved? I'd say out of the 100,000 Expo visitors, we got about 500 guests who dropped by to take a look at Model 2. But you know what? The Expo has only just begun. Yes. After all, it's only day one. We still have, like, half a year. We just gotta keep moving forward, one person at a time. We knew from the start that we wouldn't be able to win against the high-budget bots from the major companies. That's why we just have to slowly and steadily crawl along. I mean, winning the Grand Prix might be a little difficult. But the fact that we're standing here at all is a miracle in and of itself. Yes. Second day? I have a couple more tree posts. Uh, as of February 26, 2020, 79% has spread worldwide. Total completion, 16%. Spain passed 80%. Finland passed 70%. Japan completion past 30%. Uh, attention, currently performing at booth R2-9 via Tokyo Expo Odaiba Arena. Please stop by. Okay, so we went from the first day to the fifth day. So in that span of time, have more people been gathering around to see Gunvaro perform? Today,この巨大ロボットの祭典ともいえるお台場会場で、初々しい才能を羽ばたかせようとしている現役高校生をご紹介しましょう。種子島ロボ部の部長を務めるセノミヤアキホさんです。こんにちは。Akio <laughs> oh, is so nervous. <laughs> the pretty reporter points her mic at Akiho, who stiffens up immediately. Is she going to be able to answer her questions? I'm watching from a distance, and quite frankly, I'm concerned. This is a live broadcast. It could be shown on Tanegashima right now. Yeah. タネガシマロボ部は今回の万博に一般参加枠で出展しており、しかも制作者は唯一の現役高校生なんです。すごいですよね。We're the only high schoolers. I mean, that has to say something, right? That we're the only ones here showing off a robot who are high schoolers. I mean, I feel like that would be a pretty big deal. 
at, at least at least in my eye I mean we've gotten so much help from Doc and the and Jaxa so the while the production of Model 2 has been a little a li just a bit rocky you know we have made it here af through everything and so far so good right now with the expo sure we started off a little um rocky uh, here i feel like akio and kaito uh, at the end of the expo will come away from this as being one of the most important moments in their lives. Because I feel like this is just a huge, huge step for them. They've gotten so much help. It, it just shows their tenacity, and more so Akio's tenacity, but it's really something to behold to have high schoolers at the expo doing all this and showing off a big robot Senomiya san, how did you create a robot to make a big robot? It's the dream of being a robot! <laughs> it's always been a dream to become a robot. She really is nervous. Uh, calm down. So, so not this guy. It's like, come on, correct yourself. Come on, Akio. Tanegashima deva, robot to kai hatsu wa sakan nan this guy. Uchu kai hatsu no ho deva you made this guy. ないです。よく笑われたりしたし、部員も今じゃ二人だけだし。それでも協力してくれる人はたくさんいました。日本人はやっぱりロボットが好きなんだと思います。なるほど。東京万博に実際に参加してみて五日目ですが、手応えはど
The reporter glances over at the man who seems to be her director, and then looks back to the camera. とっても楽しみですよね。もしかしたら姉妹で共演もあるかもしれませんよ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。ええ。
<laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a nice gesture, but it just I'm picturing that in my head, and that would look a little weird to any outsiders. It's like he's trying to get her to loosen up, <laughs> I guess. Because... Could she be more of a handful? Today is going to be a crazy one. I look at my wristwatch. February 26, 2020, 11.14 a.m. Misune is scheduled to appear in less than three hours. Well, so they have some time to get themselves ready for her showing up. Oh, switching over to Misune. Back and forth. Back and forth. The floor beneath me sways back and forth according to the rhythm. The sound of waves faintly reaches my ears. In this dark, narrow room, I put on a black bodysuit. Like a membrane, it's thin and elastic. It sticks tightly against my bare skin. The cool feeling is pleasant. Then, I realize that my body is hot and I bite my lip. Like, what, what is this suit that she's wearing? And also, doesn't it look like she's wearing, like, a full body hug? You know, from... It going, not just on her legs, but also on her arms? Without realizing it, I'm excited. Back and forth. The floor sways. The world shakes. Outside the small window is a sea of blue. No land in sight. That's Aidy's voice. Never thought I'd get a wyvern as a call sign. I'm sure it was intentional. The same call sign was used in a certain robot anime long ago. Gunvarel. A ghost that doesn't exist. A phantom with no substance. It might be unexpectedly fitting. I hold my helmet under my arm and open the watertight door of the room. I'm trying to determine where she is exactly. I walk through a narrow passage toward the hangar. She's in a hangar? Exiting onto a catwalk, I look down at the giant black spider on a near on a stand on standby below. Oh, uh, Black Spider. Giant, wait. Is she talking about the prototype at the expo? <laughs> White like Gunvarel. Back and forth. The world shakes again. The waves are high today. That means nothing to me. Maybe not at the expo. 
She's somewhere else? I'm not sure what to make of that scene with Misune. I mean, I, I, I feel like it's, uh, you know, ramping up to something major, but I can't, I can't really say. I, I, I can't really say, like, what exactly she's getting ready for. I mean, it, it was so... <laughs> I mean, myster it was so mysterious and cryptic. That's the word I was looking for, cryptic. Um, so... <sighs> oh boy, and my, and my mind is reeling about that scene. I... I feel like it's gonna take some time for me to process what was going on there. And I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to come up with any uh, theory of what's going on with her during that scene. Akio has been incoherent on the mic for a while now. Her mind's on Misune. She keeps messing up what she's supposed to say. That energy she had from the first day is long gone. The fact that Misune is coming here today has completely put her on edge. A technician looking man? Um, yeah, about the motors. <laughs> it's like, I, I hope she doesn't give away what kind of motors we're using. Uh, I hurriedly input a command and make Model 2 turn on the spot. Akio notices the noise and stops talking. <sighs> that was close. She almost said monopole. She looks over at me with a blank expression on her face. She doesn't even seem to have realized what she was saying. I shake my head at her in silence and she comes to her senses. There we go. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> it's a trade secret, yes. Good grief. What a handful. That was too close. Since Akio is busy working the mic, I gotta handle the laser gun and operate Model 2 at the same time. How is he able to do that? Why isn't Michi operating the laser gun? Michi only came on the first day. He's currently MIA. What do you mean he's MIA? He's right here. I really hope he's hand handling our housing problem. At least Candy-san shows up once a day. Oh wait, that was a flashback, right? What? Now, I'm just slightly confused. This must be part of a flashback. So Michi isn't here currently. Where is he? But all he does is watch the robot with a satisfied look for about an hour before leaving. So aside from the opening day, it's basically just been me and Akio running the booth and Model 2. How is Kaito able to operate both the laser and operate Gunvarel? I, I thought that was... A, you know, nearly impossible. 
input and command inputs require both hands. The laser transmission gun also requires both hands to uh, properly aim it. Yeah, so how is, how is he able to do both? It's impossible to do both at the same time. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, I've had to use special commands a whole bunch. Once I input one of these commands, the robot moves by itself for about 30 seconds. I only input a command when Akio gives the order. Otherwise, I'm holding up the transmission gun. I've never had to work this much in my life. But given there's nobody else here to do it, I have little say in the matter. If we can... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Normally she'd explain over the mic that Gunvarel'd be transitioning from a Gekisai Daiichi to a Blast of Spirit. Did you even forget about that? This Misune stuff must have really messed her up. Yeah. It's like she's so focused on Misune now that, that her mind is wandering and she's not as focused on Gunvaral anymore. And that's a problem. Whatever. I'll just do as I'm told. I input the Gekisai Daiichi command, immediately pick up the transmission gun from the table next to me, and fire. Once Gekisai Daiichi is about to end, I put down the transmission gun and input the next command. That's a lot of work, jeez. When the combo ends, Akio will thank the audience for coming. Well, she's supposed to, but she doesn't. She's looking around restlessly. In hopes that she'll find Misune? What's she doing? Come on, keep it together! It's when I'm about to warn her. I noticed that it's not just Akio who's so restless. So's the audience. Everyone in the audience is whispering a single name, almost like some big game of telephone. Oh, uh, Misune? Did Misune just show up? I, I swear I faintly hear the footsteps of someone wearing high heels. Senomiya... Senomiya Mizaki has arrived. The rumor propagates like a wave and spreads out amongst the throngs of people. Oh boy. Before long, the whole audience starts moving simultaneously. <laughs> As if Misune is like parting the Red Sea. <laughs> Not just the audience in front of our booth. The guests at the other booths are all heading in the same direction. There's little doubt that they're headed for the x booth. Everyone's going to see Misune. What should I do? Should we go too? It's like, what about your... Like, what about your performance here? But after my experience with the sea of flesh on the first day, I'm a bit weary. As for Akio? I have no clue what she's thinking as she puts the mic down and dashes in the opposite direction of the crowd. Akio! Where is she going? In the opposite direction? Okay. Oh, I get it. She's trying to catch Misune before she goes to the XK booth. 
Clever girl. Yeah. <laughs> that is clever. I shut down the power after having Model 2 crouch down and quickly follow after Akiho. <clears throat> huh, okay, well... I, I, th I think this is a good stopping point for now. It, it's a bit of a cliffhanger. So... It's like, we'll see if... Akio and Kaito catch up with Misane next time. I hope you all enjoyed watching, and thank you all for watching as well. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, like, favorite, and claw that subscribe button to become part of the pack. And as always, everyone, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you may be.